Hello, this is Christine Faulkner, Elk Grove's trust and estate planning attorney, and I'm here to talk to you today about family wealth preservation planning, planning for a lifetime of protection, guidance, and love for the people that you love the most in your life. My firm is Kava and Faulkner, attorneys and counselors at law, and I am here coming to you from Elk Grove, California. Thank you so much for attending today. Putting a face to the voice, isn't it nice to kind of have a sense of just who it is that's talking to you? And I wanted to show you a picture of my why. These are my boys. They're much older now. Cameron, my youngest, is 21, and Daniel, my oldest, is 23. They were in fourth and sixth grade when this picture was taken, and it was taken at a time that I was not practicing estate planning law. I was a litigator, and I'll tell you, it was a concern for me, and that's one of the reasons I ended up here doing what I love so much, which is helping families create a plan and a legacy for the people that they love the most. So these two young men are my wise, in addition to my husband. We all have those people in our lives that we love and want to make sure are protected. Who are the people in your life that are your why that really compelled you to attend our webinar today. So just a little COVID humor. We know that this is still such a compelling issue for all of us to stay home and stay safe. Um, we thought this was just a cute pickle uh, picture to tickle everyone's fancy. Um, hopefully it doesn't hit too close to home, but definitely something we all need to consider, of course, in the seriousness of where we are. Um, going into the fall, COVID cases are increasing and our health is on everybody's mind. So I want to tell you, we've been at this now for six months and we have all of our virtual systems in place to make sure that you are fully protected. We do all of our meetings online unless you don't have that capability. And then we will meet with you in person if need be. And of course, if you're not ambulatory or your family is not ambulatory, we will come to you of course with masks and all of the appropriate precautions. Let's talk about why you came today. Perhaps you came because you want the total comfort and assurance of knowing what would happen to your family if you became incapacitated or passed away. Perhaps you want to know what is going to happen to my assets if something happens to me. Perhaps you want to know about estate tax. We'll definitely talk about the state of flux we're in right now in light of the election, and we'll cover this a little bit later. Maybe you want to know what happens to your body, what happens to your assets if you become incapacitated, and would the people that you want to make decisions for you, would they be the people doing that, and would your bodily autonomy be honored? If you came for any of those reasons, you came for the right reasons because we are going to give you all of the information you need to know to have the total assurance of knowing that your family can know exactly what to do when something or if something happens to you and also knowing that they will have the ongoing guidance that they need to take care of you to take care of your legacy in the event that you something happens to you and you pass away or you become disabled when was the last time that you reviewed your existing plan or don't have a plan? Then what is the state's plan for you? Many people create a plan and haven't looked at it. They think it's a one and done and they don't um, ever get back to look or check in on it. And so I want to ask you, when did you last check up on your existing plan if you created one? If you have a plan, jot that number down right now. If the answer is never, it is a good time for you to think about getting back into an attorney to have your plan reviewed. Maybe you don't have any planning documents at all. I'm here to tell you that the state has a plan for you. And so whether you believe you have a plan or not, you do. Before we get into the meat and potatoes, however, of 
the presentation, I want to spend just a few minutes telling you about myself and my practice. So I was, I've been practicing now for 28 years. I will, was a litigator, which is what all of my peers in law school wanted to do. I was a litigator for about 14 years. And I'll tell you a little bit about me going way back. I was a swimmer for many, many years, um, was really successful both in, as a young swimmer, um, a swimmer in high school and also in college. I was just reflecting on this. Back when I was eight, year, eight years old, I was voted the most valuable player, most valuable swimmer, meaning I racked up the most points for the team at eight years old. I became an All-American when I was a um, swimmer in high school and I was voted into the Sacramento Athletic Hall of Fame when I was in high school as well. So very um, grown up on excellence, grown up on practice makes perfect and dedication. So just a little bit about me in terms of why I ended up in law school that felt like a good fit for me with my competitive spirit. And yes, I did wanna be a litigator. I did that for 14 years and re realized as I went through that practice, while it gives me a great um, perspective to be able to guide people on why they it's so important to stay out of court uh, because I have so much experience representing clients and the discomfort that that creates and the uncertainty. Uh, I, as a litigator, I loved it for a while. It was thrilling, but over time, it really wore on me to have to bill by the hour. So every time I picked up the phone, wrote an email, the client would get a mail, and there was much uncertainty in terms of how much the work would cost. I also didn't like keeping track of my time in that way. Uh, I was much more focused on doing a great job rather than having to track every minute. I also was often gone in trial and depositions and couldn't control my calendar and also couldn't be responsive to clients in the way that I wanted. And ultimately, I decided to switch my practice because I got sick of fighting over insurance money in court with fighting with lawyers and judges. Imagine having to show up in that way day in and day out. It was the most um, unfulfilling uh, practice that I had developed over time. And so remember what I said, I realized how important it was for me to protect my family and I wanted to show up and partner and guide my clients rather than represent them in the adversarial process. So when I switched my practice 14 and a half years ago because I own my own firm, I implemented a flat fee billing schedule my clients love it. I think it's hugely important for people to know what the costs are up front and they won't get nickel and dime for every phone call and email, but that the scope and quality of the work is the focus of the relationship. I have a team of non-legal professionals to support us through the planning process. And here's something I want you to think about. Planning is not a one and done. It is something you need to check on because the people in your life will change over time. You may have people come like grandchildren or children. You may have people go such as your parents or other loved ones that you lose. The law will likely change, and we're gonna talk about that later, and your assets will change over time. And so think about the kind of lawyer you wanna work with. We'll talk about that more coming up in future slides as well, whether you want to work with someone who's gonna be a part of your life to guide you and your family powerfully into the future to make sure that things will always work, or a lawyer you'll see one time. So let's get back to that discussion. Maybe you don't have a plan at all, but really the state does have a plan for you, whether you knew it or not. So let's talk about what the typical experience is for working with an estate planning attorney, and I call that planning for death. The typical experience is working with a transactional attorney. What does that mean? It means working with an attorney who exchanges a binder full of papers for the money you pay. You will probably get cookie cutter form documents and who much, who knows how much time you will actually get to spend with that lawyer. Maybe you're working with a jack of all trades, someone who practices in PI, bankruptcy, they dabble in estate planning and uh, 
family law, so you don't get the benefit of working with someone who specializes in estate planning and really knows the law. Maybe you're getting someone who is just out of law school, has just hung their shingle, and they don't have the breadth of experience that a more uh, experienced lawyer such as myself has who focuses exclusively in this area. And you may not get a lot of time with the attorney. You may end up working with a, with a paralegal. The thing is, you'll never know whether your plan will avoid probate or estate taxes. It likely will leave assets to heirs unprotected because these types of attorneys don't really know cutting edge techniques in planning because they don't focus on it exclusively. You definitely won't get that ongoing legal guidance at no cost, or if there will be a cost, you'll have to pay by the hour to to speak with your attorney and your assets could be lost in a department of unclaimed property. So the big question is, will it work when your family needs it? So I'm gonna tell you a quick story about a client of mine who ended up in court, even though her family had a plan. So her parents paid good money to get a trust put in place and everything had been done really well. And then likely their, her parents were going to refinance the house. So they, took it out of the trust without getting any guidance from their attorney, probably because they knew he would bill them by the hour, so they figured they would just do it themselves. Well, unfortunately, the mother passed away and the house never made it back into the trust. What ended up happening is dad retitled the house in joint tenancy with his daughter. A couple of years later, they decided to get a loan on that property in both of their names. And then something happened a couple of years after that. Somebody decided, oops, this house should probably be in the trust. And so daughter quick claimed the, she created a quick claim deed to that property back to her dad. And then you guessed it, her dad passed away. So here was the end result. She was responsible for the loan, but did not have title to the house and didn't have the ability to sell it. And by the time she came to me, she had been working on this for two years and was about ready to file bankruptcy if I couldn't help her. We were lucky to avoid probate, but still ended up in court on a petition to get the property put back into trust. That took about seven months and about $4,500. So. I suspect what happened here is that even though her family had a plan, they thought they were protected, they ended up not being protected because they didn't want to reach out to their attorney and they didn't have an ongoing relationship. It ended up cost costing the family lots of time and money and could have been an even bigger problem for her because imagine having to file bankruptcy because of this situation. Here's what we do at Coven Faulkner. I call it planning for life, and it is a whole new experience. We ensure that our clients make informed and empowered decisions by spending time with them to get to know their family, their assets, and really understand what they need to create a custom plan. We're gonna make sure that your family never ends up in court and ends up losing all of that money, thousands of dollars unnecessarily. We're gonna make sure your assets are never lost upon your death because we're going to meet with you going forward into the future and periodically to make sure that as you acquire new assets, they are always properly titled to your trust and that your beneficiary designations on those kinds of accounts are correctly designated. You're going to get to meet with us periodically going forward into the future. So we're always gonna be part of your family. We, of course, specialize in estate planning, so we have methods to pr protect family members from outsiders, from creditors and predators. Many of my clients this year especially have really come to love this option to make sure that the legacy that you leave for your loved ones cannot be taken by their creditors. And we're going to give you a lifetime of right legal and financial guidance so that you're making the very best choices. And as always, our ultimate goal is to make sure your family never ends up in court and there's no conflict, but rather harmony in your family. Your plan is gonna work when your family needs it the most. 
So we practice in a way that is called a relational practice versus transactional. We want to be part of your life going forward to always give you necessary guidance and be available to you. So as we go through this presentation, I want you to think about that. So let me ask you, what kind of attorney do you want to work with? Do you want to work with someone who's going to be there at any given point to give you guidance and to give your family guidance? Or do you want to work with a transactional attorney who is going to charge you the minute you call them for a moment of their time? Write that down. It's important to be thinking of as we go through this presentation. So the state's plan for you is called either a conservatorship or guardianship in the event you become incapacitated or probate if you pass away. So what does that look like? If you have no plan and you become incapacitated as a legal adult, there must be a guardianship proceeding. And in California, that's called a conservatorship proceeding. And the real question is, are you okay, and I want you to write this down, are you okay with a judge deciding who would take care of your person, making healthcare decisions for you, deciding where you will live, deciding who will manage your money, or do you really want to take control and make that decision for, you, for yourself? Is it important that you get to maintain control of deciding who are the best people in your life to handle your healthcare decisions, to handle your assets if you could not. That is the million dollar question when it comes to conservatorship, which is not only expensive and invasive and time consuming for the people who step in for you, you also lose con complete control and the expense associated with it is considerable. So ask yourself this question, is the money that I've worked so hard for, am I okay with it? going down the tubes if I become uh, incapacitated and spending 15, 20, 30, $40,000 on a conservatorship proceeding, or would I prefer to take that money and invest it and make it grow for my beloved people in my life, my family, my pets, my uh, friends, whoever that may be. If you pass away, the same is true. You lose all control and there will be a process called probate, whereby a judge has to, has to determine who is entitled to your property and go through the process of oversight to make sure that property is properly transferred. So here's what triggers probate. If you own property worth more than $166,000 that is titled property, such as real estate, bank accounts that don't have a beneficiary designation or stocks that that are not part of an investment account, but stock certificates, or perhaps you own a business. If that is worth more than $166,000 and you pass away, there is no way for that asset to be passed on to the people that you love. And here's why. If you have a stock certificate in your name, there is no automatic transition to another person. If you own real estate, remember when you purchased the property, and you signed reams and reams of paper in the title office, well, your signature is your legal ability to sign a contract, to convey title to another person, to sell a piece of property, to buy a piece of property. And if you're no longer around, you cannot do so. So unfortunately, the state has this probate process whereby oversight of that whole transition has to occur where a judge is ensuring that everything is done correctly. And unfortunately, you see on the slide, it is a slow drip, 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 sticky pipe process here. So probate is a lawsuit you file against yourself with your own money for the benefit of your creditors. Probate is expensive. There are attorney's fees, executor's fees, appraiser's fees, filing fees, creditors, and bond premiums. And here's the thing, even if somebody you wanted to step up and act as your personal representative did that, if they're not credit worthy, they won't be able to um, qualify for the bond and they'll be denied the opportunity to step in and act for you. So think about this. In California, in Northern California, where we're from, where I'm from, 
probably 450 to 500,000 is coming on the median home price. It might be a little high, but for purposes of our discussion here, it's a great example. So the cost of probate for just that one asset, which is the fair market value of a home, regardless of what your mortgage might be, $500,000, it's about 5% of fair market value. So you're talking $25,000 just to go through this probate process. Write down right now, what could you do with $25,000? Would you prefer to spend it on an unnecessary court process only for people who don't plan? Or would you really love to take that money and invest it in your kid's education, in an investment account where you can actually grow that nest egg to enhance your life or the life of the people that you love? So write that down. If you have no plan in place, this is what potentially you're looking at. And decide right now how you prefer to use that money. So you can see here, this is the will of Jackie Kennedy Onassis. And the point about a will is that it is public. People can read. You can look here and see all of the gifts that she decided to give and who was going to get those and just exactly what it was. So the probate process is public. Even if you have a will, it will be lodged in court. And it is a very public process. The other thing you should know is that a will does not avoid probate. It will definitely benefit you, and it is better than having nothing at all, but a will does not avoid that probate process. We'll talk about what will completely avoid probate here in a minute. So if you really value privacy, think about whether you do have a will or whether you don't, how that feels to you, having people inspect your will and know who's gonna come into what money. And if you have minor children, think about how that would feel for you if you knew that your kids' names were going to be um, viewable in open court in a public document. Many of my clients really value their privacy and they love the fact that planning creates that privacy for them. Here's the other thing, if you have minor children or minor beneficiaries that you want to receive your assets, during the probate process, they are entitled to get everything outright when they turn 18. Many, many of my clients, including myself, even though my sons are now 21 and 23, I still worry about them coming into assets right now because let's be honest, they still don't have the life experience to really prepare them to know exactly how to handle that money well and not to treat it for what it is, which is a windfall. The thing that happens to people, young people who come into money at a young age all at once is they tend to delay their maturation process. They may delay getting an education if ever. And many times those people never become responsible with money because they don't have any skin in the game. Do you have minor beneficiaries who you have concerns about getting your money at 18? If you have no plan in place, please be aware that if something happens to you, if you pass away before your kids turns eight, turn 18, this is exactly what will happen. Your children will come into those assets at 18 and who knows how they will use that money. If that is a concern to you, write that down. I want to make sure that my kids don't get money outright when they turn 18. I want to make sure that I protect my kids from themselves so that they get an education and become responsible young people. So even if you do have a will where you've named long-term guardians, as in guardians for your children, up until the time they become adults, have you named short-term guardians? Many lawyers will put long-term guardianship in place, but they don't have the short-term guardianship or first responders that we incorporate in our kids' protection planning. So what would happen if you and your spouse, if you're married, or what would happen to your kids if you didn't come home, especially if you have no plan at all? There is a high likelihood that they will end up with in, in the custody of CPS, even if it's for a short period of time until arrangements could be made. So I wanna tell you a quick 
true story about what happened to a family in Southern California. The Barber family were traveling with their kids in Arizona and were unfortunately involved in a very serious car accident. Both parents were killed and all three of their sons survived. The kids were taken to CPS until family members could come and retrieve them from Arizona. The sister-in-law decided that she would be the best guardian for those kids and decided to keep them from their grandparents. She, in the guardianship proceeding, was certain that she would be the person who would be nominated to care for both the kids and their money. As you can imagine, many other family members stepped up, there was divisiveness within the family during this guardianship proceeding, and indeed someone else was named the guardian. But during this period of time, the family was the family was kept from their loved ones. They were kept from seeing these children, and it caused huge divisiveness within the family relationships that were fractured from that point forward. So when we talk about court and conflict, this is what we talk about. Having a plan in place to protect your kids, both in the short and the long term, is so important. Even if you are incapacitated, you haven't passed away, you want to have a plan for people that your kids know who are local first responders to be able to care for your children. This is something that we put in place for our clients called Kids Protection Planning. If you have minor children at home, if you want to make sure that there would always be a plan in place for them, make a note of wanting to get more information or ensure that you have a Kids Protection Plan for your minor children. I don't know if you are familiar with Terry Schiavo's case, but this woman was a 28-year-old married young woman when she had a cardiac event. She unfortunately was in a persistent vegetative state but had no planning in place. After years, her husband decided that she would not have wanted to be kept on life support. Her parents, of course, had such a difficult time wanting to let her go and they felt that eventually she might come back to who she had been. A court case ensued with, you know, in-laws on the opposite end of the table and yes, once again, court conflict, hundreds of thousands of dollars being spent on this court process that had Ms. Shivo had an advanced health care directive, had her incapacity planning, outlining exactly what her wishes were, outlining who would be the people who would make these decisions for her, this could have been completely avoided. If you don't have your incapacity planning in place, think about what you would want to happen and who you would want to make decisions for you. And especially in this time of COVID where even young healthy people are ending up in the hospital, this is a very real and concerning matter having your advanced health care directive so someone can stand in for you is so important to avoid that conservatorship we talked about earlier. Common planning techniques that don't work well, owning property jointly. Oftentimes I have clients say, what if I just put my kids on my property and then when I pass away, I won't have anything to worry about. It'll just go to my kids. I like to tell people, you know, when you put your children on your property, you are also opening up your property to their creditors. So if they were to get into litigation, have a bankruptcy, your property could be taken as a result of their of your co-owner's creditors. So generally not a great idea. Designating a beneficiary can work sometimes, but if you have minor children, it's not a great option because your minor children cannot receive your assets. If you were to die and your kids were named as your primary beneficiaries, those assets would end up in probate court because your kids are too young to receive them. Signing a will is great, but you've seen that it doesn't protect all of your assets from probate and relying on a trust schedule alone doesn't protect you from your keeping your assets out of the Department of Unclaimed Property unless it is often updated. 
The only foolproof way to avoid court is to have a fully funded revocable living trust with disability provisions where you retitle all of your investment accounts to your trust. You retitle your bank account to your, to your trust as well, or at the very least, you name your bank account with a pay on death beneficiary. You retitle your real estate to the trust and you transfer stocks in your business or stock and bond certificates to your trust. You assign all of your personal property to your trust and you look closely at your beneficiary designations to make sure that the people you want to receive those beneficiary designated accounts are the ones who actually receive them. And if you have minor kids, that you are actually naming the trust as a beneficiary. Would, would you like the idea of being able to protect the legacy that you leave your loved ones from their creditors? How cool would that be if you could leave your assets in a creditor protected trust for your surviving spouse if you're married or for your kids so that their creditors cannot take the assets that you have left for them, that the assets that you have worked so hard for. for. So this year in 2020, this is something I'm finding is really appealing to many of my clients, especially because of the likelihood of so many bankruptcies happening in 2020 because of COVID-19. So People can end up in a bad situation due to no fault of their own, no malfeasance or um, you know, a lack of attention to detail, stuff happens. And so creating asset protection for the people that you love is a cutting edge technique that we incorporate in our planning for people who really like that idea. How does that sound to you? Does that sound like a great gift that you can give to the people that you love? What if your children were to be in a nasty divorce and the soon to be ex-spouse was looking to take some of what you had worked so hard for and really desire for your children to have as a nest egg for themselves. Creating this kind of asset protection prevents that from ever happening. So jot down, would I like to create that kind of asset protection to fully lock down the legacy I leave for the people that I love? If so, that's definitely something we can help, and help you create for your loved ones. So right now, estate taxes are $11.58 million per person or over $23 million per couple, which means that most of us who are middle class people don't have anything to worry about when it comes to estate tax. The estate tax, if you are fortunate enough to be in that tax bracket, is 40 cents on the dollar. So if you go over that $11.58 million, you'll pay 40 cents on the dollar. If you are under that, of course, there will be no estate tax, so no worries there. But because we're in an election year and I know things are still in a bit of a state of flux, there's a good likelihood that if Joe Biden becomes president, this will change. Just be aware that the estate tax can change year by year, so it is not ever settled and it can be drastically reduced. Jot down if you have concerns about estate taxes, want to know more about them, if you're, or if you're in this tax bracket, jot down if you have no planning in place, I definitely need to get my affairs in order to make sure that I'm not paying that 40% estate tax. Right now, there's over $9 billion in the, in the Department of Unclaimed Property, and that's frankly because people pass away and their loved ones don't know that they own certain property. It's not recorded anywhere. Do you want this to be you? Write that down. Is it important that you make sure that you never have departments, that you never have assets that end up in the Department of Unclaimed Property? We always make sure when working with our clients that they have a way to record all of their assets in one place so that their family will always know what they own. This is so important so that everything that you've worked so hard for is not lost or not one penny is left on the table, but instead it ends up where it should go, which is to the people that you love most in your life. 
What about your values, insights, and experiences? And if you had to choose leaving money for your loved ones or your values, insights, and stories, which would you choose? One of the things that we do that's so important in our practice is we do what's called a leg family legacy conversation, which is a court recorded conversation where you get to share with your loved ones what makes you you, what you love most about your family, those special moments, and your ability to share your philosophies on religion, philanthropy, education, and money. It's one of my favorite parts of planning, and it's one of those things that we do because we know that planning is about the legacy that you leave. It is more than money. So if you would love to hear more about our legacy conversation or like the idea of doing this, jot that down as well and let us know. So we've seen now what doesn't work. One size fits all planning that leaves your family at risk, which is working with a transactional attorney who focuses on forms and documents. Sometimes people choose to do it themselves or they work with a cheap lawyer and there are holes in their planning. And ultimately the family ends up in court with a big mess that they never anticipated. It doesn't keep your assets out of court or the Department of Unclaimed Property in the event you become incapacitated or pass away, and it doesn't protect inheritance from creditors. Your kids also, you've seen, will be at risk from receiving an inheritance when they turn 18, and you risk really um, putting them in a situation where they are their own worst enemy and don't mature or become financially responsible in the way that you would hope for your own children. And planning that doesn't focus on the real legacy that you leave, which is those moments with your family, your philosophies, and who are meaningful people in your life that you wish your loved ones to continue to have relationships with. Working with those types of attorney attorneys are not going to serve your family well. So I'd like to tell you a little bit about how we do things at Coven Faulkner. So every plan starts with what is called a family wealth planning session, where you will get more financially organized than you've been before. And we're going to make sure that your family and the assets are always kept out of the Department of Unclaimed Property. And we do that through the family wealth planning session, which is a two hour meeting that you get with me, the attorney. So one of the things that I do really different differently than many attorneys, I don't do 15 minute consultations. I don't do half an hour consultations. We really believe in the importance of getting to know you, getting to understand your assets so that we can create a custom design plan specifically for you to protect what you love the most. We're gonna help you make informed and empowered choices. We have three levels of planning that range from $2,500 to $8,500. And I will tell you, these are all flat fees agreed to in advance and they are never, there will never be any surprises. You get to choose the level of planning that is the best fit for you. We will always give you guidance on where we think you are the best fit, but ultimately you have the final choice. The average fee, the average cost or investment that you will make for a trust-based plan is about $47.50. More people are opting for that asset protection, which brings the price up a little bit more. But believe me, when we talk about it and you fully understand the benefits of that asset protection, it's something that you might consider is well worth the investment of creating that for the people that you love in your life. And honestly, you will know with certainty that your family is going to be expertly guided with love throughout your life because we're going to be part of your life moving forward. So we want to make it as easy as possible for you. If you attend this webinar, we have a promotion code where we will give you not only a, a we waive our price for the family wealth planning session or the estate plan checkup ordinarily 
we charge $750 for the family wealth planning session, which is that two hour working session, or if you already have an estate plan, $950 for a trust review or an estate plan review, which is a 50 point review. I'm so happy to tell you that we're happy to waive that as long as you're willing to do a couple of things. First, you have to complete some homework that we have created for you. So when you make an appointment, we will send you this homework and you have to be willing to have some skin in the game yourself and to complete the homework. It takes anywhere from a half an hour to an hour and it is pretty detailed and that gives me the ability to be really prepared for you. Also, if I am doing an estate plan checkup, I'm reviewing all of your documents and in addition doing that 50 point review so that when we meet, I'm able to fully review with you exactly how your plan works and go through those 50 points to tell you where there may be holes in your planning. As long as you are willing to do the homework in either of those scenarios, we're happy to waive the, the fee, the $750 fee for the uh, family wealth planning session or the $950 fee for the estate plan checkup. The other thing that you need to agree to do is to reserve your appointment with a credit card. This is so important for us because we find that when people get something for free, they don't value it. I'm sure you'll agree with that. Uh, you only value what you pay for. And in this case, we do ask that you secure the appointment with a credit card to hold your slot. We will not charge your card. The only time the card would be charged is if you were a no call and no show for the appointment time. We completely understand that people have uh, emergencies that come up and we're fully willing to work with you even, it's the, even if it's the same day of your appointment. As long as you reschedule your appointment, your card will never be charged. So the reason it's so important for both of us that you be willing to both do the homework, have some skin in the game and reserve your appointment with a credit card is that we, I don't wanna waste your time. And I also wanna make sure that you're serious about coming in and at least getting educated, educated about where you stand right now and whether or not you plan with us that you are serious about putting the time in to do the homework and prepare. On top of that, we are happy to give you a $250 gift certificate off of your planning. When you make your appointment, just let us know that you attended this webinar and we will give you a gift certificate of $250 off. So if you actually do make a plan, you get a real gift of a reduction in that price. So here's how you can schedule with us. You can schedule online at a www.kavafaulkner.com, schedule online. You can call our office at 916-685-1225, or you can email questions to support at kavafaulkner.com. So I know that this is something that is a big step. Here's a little bit of information about how you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And we do have now a YouTube channel where I would really encourage you to go to our YouTube channel and get to know us better there. We're putting up new content regularly. And it's an opportunity to get some education without any investment other than your time. It's also an opportunity for you to get to know us better and to have a better understanding of maybe certain questions that you have in your mind. Maybe I address those here on this webinar or maybe you want to know more. It's a great place to go and get a broader depth of understanding about estate planning issues. So here are just a couple of testimonials that we have about our practice, and I love to share these. We've had many, many clients leave Google reviews, and I would really encourage you to go on to our website, check out the Google reviews that we have had. We've had recent clients who have loved this process during COVID. They were kind enough to leave a review, and we know how important that is for people to really understand 
what others' experiences have been, good, bad, or indifferent, and you know, so reviews are so important to give some insight as to whether you feel like we might be a good fit. So I want to tell you that you have, you're definitely faced with two decisions to make today. The first decision, of course, is the easiest, do nothing. Don't take any leap of faith, don't invest, settle for what you have now, and just take nothing. And I do like, take no steps forward. And I do like to say the biggest impediment to estate planning, what leaves so many people exposed is the fact that, you know, it's inertia, just getting around to making the decision to move forward and make that first step of making an appointment and then taking that next step of getting prepared for the meeting and getting some education. Your second choice, of course, is to be proactive, to decide that this is the an important decision for you to make. This is an important matter to get educated on. It is so important that you protect the people that you love the most, but you can't really do that. You can't do it in a thoughtful and educated way until you've taken the time to both prepare yourself, right, to prepare yourself to understand just what are your assets, what is your intention regarding the people you love if something happens to you, and if your intention is to preserve the assets that you've worked so hard for and to make sure the people you love most in your life are the ones who actually receive that or whether you're going to throw caution to the wind and roll the dice with whether <clears throat> your money will end up in a court process being lost to probate or conservatorship. That is where you are right now if you have no plan in place at all. So you always have a choice of doing nothing or getting started, getting started on a path for education first and creating the most thoughtful and loving plan you can for the people that you love in your life. I'm gonna encourage the latter. You can see that there's absolutely no risk for you to make the appointment because as long as you're willing to get that appointment online, or call our office and get on our calendar and book with a credit card that we won't charge as long as you show up prepared. We There's no investment of money on your part, just an investment of your time. And I'm sure you'll probably agree that anything worthwhile takes an, an investment of both your time and likely money to end up in a better position than you're in right now. I know that many people worry about their assets. They worry because they don't know, well, that's what we're here for. We're here to help guide you through our expertise and focus in exclusively planning and practicing in estate planning to give you that guidance that you need to create the exact plan you need to protect the people that you love most in your life. So, are you going to stay where you are now or are you gonna pull the trigger? We've made it as easy as possible to get on the calendar. We would love to see you. And as I said earlier, you're gonna get the opportunity to spend time with me. Let me tell you a little bit about what that looks like here in the coronavirus times. For the most part, that means we're going to be meeting virtually online. And we're going to go through everything with you. We're gonna sift through what your assets look, look like, give you education about what you need to protect your minor children, how to put that kids protection planning in place, just what your exact exposure is if you become incapacitated or pass away. Then we're going to talk about what is the best fit from a fee perspective are we a good fit to work together? And we're gonna give you that education and of course have the opportunity to listen really closely to your concerns and answer questions that you have about what is it gonna to take to put the kind of plan in place that you need to put in place for your family. I imagine that you have concerns about what might happen if you became incapacitated or 
Maybe you're even wondering if you have designated beneficiaries for those beneficiary designated accounts that you have. I know many times when I'm working with people and sitting in that family wealth planning session or even a review, people haven't, they're busy, they're living their lives, they're working, caring for their families and they haven't taken the time recently to look at those beneficiary designated accounts. It's so important that you have beneficiaries named and you have the right beneficiaries named. That's one of the things that we do during that family wealth planning session or trust review session is to take a close look at who are your beneficiaries and have you named the right people to have the outcome that you really want to have. Think about how hard you work, how difficult it is for most of us to save money, put aside for investment for a rainy day to protect our families in the future. And think about how it would feel if it turned out those assets ended up in court and you ended up losing $20,000 to a probate process that could have been completely avoided had you decided to get educated and put a plan in place to protect, especially your minor children, but to protect the people that you love in your life. Perhaps you're single and you don't have a spouse, so it's even more important for you if you are single to make sure that you have a plan to protect your minor children, to protect your pets. And I have clients who don't have children, and so without a plan, one of the things that many people don't know is your parents will end up with your assets. Did you know that, that the state's plan for a person who has no spouse and who has no children is to leave those assets to your parents. And then if your parents aren't alive, to your siblings. And if your siblings aren't alive, to your aunts and uncles and then your cousins, those people are called your heirs at law. My clients who are single and have no children have very definitive ideas about where they want their hard-earned assets to go and many times it is not back to their parents and it is not to their siblings or maybe it's not to all of their siblings many times they have charities that they wholeheartedly support and they wish a portion portion of their wealth to go to those charities to continue supporting those charities in the future they want those assets to go to close friends or other people in their life, nieces and nephews that are not part of a statute, not part of a statutory scheme. So if you're single and you have no plan in place, think about how that feels to you, having no control over your assets, where they go, how they're used, and whether you really feel like your parents need to receive your assets. Maybe you have special needs children and you are so concerned you have a special needs child and you just don't know what to do. We definitely handle special needs planning so that we can put a plan in place for your children so that they will always be entitled to receive those so important public benefits that they receive without ever risking losing Medicare, Social Security disability benefits, and many times for young people with special needs, it is the Medicare, the medical benefits that are so important. Did you know that if you don't have a plan and you pass away, your children will receive those benefits outright, and if you have a special needs child, that will disqualify them for the public benefits that they're receiving. I would ask you to really think about how that feels is that scary? I bet it is. I bet that strikes terror in your heart at the thought that your child could lose those public benefits that are so important. So if you know that you need to put a special needs plan in place, now is the time. Now is the time to get off the dime, get prepared, get real about what is so important to you and to give yourself peace of mind so that you don't have to worry about this anymore. How great would it be if you could take this worry off of your plate, if you could tuck it away and realize I have a partner, a professional partner who is going to guide me all of the way through this so that at the end, there is a light at the end of the tunnel and I have solved this big worry that I have and I know that I'll be able to sleep at night. I don't need to worry about this anymore. 
So once again, the biggest impediment to estate planning is inertia. I understand that the fear of cost is, you know, how much is, this, is it going to cost? We talked about the average fee and let's face it, estate planning isn't sexy. It's not like going on a vacation to Hawaii, but it is necessary and it is so important to the people who you love. And I, I am guessing probably for you as well, for you to have the kind of peace of mind that you would like to have to know that if something does happen to you, that your money is not seeping out, but it is really available for the people that you love. I know that planning is not cheap, but good things in life never are cheap. And really cheap things we know are never good. So deciding on creating a plan is you know you're really faced again with those two choices the first choice is to create a solution involving absolutely no effort on your part which means that you do nothing or maybe you go online and try to create some solution on your own this is pretty much what everybody does right so you're in with the crowd do nothing or do as little as possible basically do the bare minimum that you need to get by, even if you know in your heart of hearts that doing that bare minimum is likely not going to protect your family. The second option obviously is to consider that, yes, there will be a price associated with planning if you decide to put a plan in place, but focus on the value that that planning and that money that you spend on creating a quality plan is going to bring to your life and bring to the people that you love most in your life. You want every advantage in your favor that things are gonna go the way that you expect. And to risk all of that to chance, which is to do nothing or to, to try to create a plan online on your own, is that something that you really wish to, to do for your family? Or are you really willing to step, a, step out of your comfort zone, get out of what the crowd usually does, realize that the value of planning is both your own peace of mind, but also caring for the people that you love so much in your life and having a future looking plan that will always ensure that they are taken care of for you. What is what is the value of that to you? Write down that number. What is the value to make sure that you don't have to worry about this anymore, number one? How much in dollars and cents is that worth to you that you have the bandwidth now to begin focusing on something else aside from worrying about this? But also, what is the value to you in real dollars to avoid probate? We talked about the cost of probate you can probably extrapolate from your own assets what that might look like for you maybe the number is twenty five thousand dollars maybe that number is fifty thousand dollars so the real cost of probate could be considerable i know for us that was a year of college think about what that means in your own life write that number down internalize that and decide for yourself Although there is a cost to planning, whether you have a plan or not, are you ready to get proactive and empowered by making decisions for yourself to decide who will make decisions for me, who will make decisions in the event I become incapacitated or pass away, and do I want to, to decide that for myself or do I want a judge to decide? Ultimately, this is about you taking control, you deciding that you want to empower yourself and to protect your loved ones and keep them out of court and conflict. I'm so happy that you attended this webinar today and I look forward to seeing you soon. Take care.